everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello guys. Ah no, some brown reviewer Silver Quill. Hail to the king, baby. <laughs> Who's been in inhabited by the spirit of Duke Nukem apparently. <laughs> And um, welcome to a very interesting series of reviews. Uh, throughout the following days, you are going to hear us talk about the uh, My Little Pony Finship is Magic series, uh, focused on five villains of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic universe. Uh, those uh, have been released by IDW on a special uh, series that's been released throughout April. And we are going to talk about issues number one, Two, three, four, and five. And of course, we're gonna go in order. And towards the end of it, we're gonna to talk to you about the ones that we like, the ones that we didn't like, uh, in case the reviews are not clear enough. So, uh, the first one that we're going to be talking about is the King Sombra issue. That is issue number one, written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Brenda Hickey, and colors by Heather Breckel. Okay, we're going to start with first impressions, what we think of it, what uh, what, our, what our opinion of it is, and then we're going to go uh, deep, deep into spoilers. And with this one more than any other, because, wow. Guys, what did you think of this one comic in particular? The, the, the one that opens the series, what did you think of it? Well, I thought it was pretty hardcore. This Sombra's one bad mother trotter. <laughs> oh, God. And I don't think I can go much further without needing a lozenge. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how he does that voice. Uh, no, I, I, this was a very strong start to the Fiendship is Magic. Uh, not just for how it characterized Sombra and his origin story, but also maybe a little commentary on Cadence. Oh? And a lot of commentary on the Crystal Empire, which, uh, we'll get into until we hit the spoiler section. I will say there's also some fascination for what got omitted from this comic. Uh, so that'll also be worth discussing, but really, uh, spoiler warning, I'm just gonna give away this much at least. This is my favorite of the five. We started from a high point, which unfortunately means things kinda went downhill for me after that. <laughs> you peaked too early, feed ship, you peaked too early. Well, you're not alone on that one. I will also, I am also of the opinion that the, to, to put it in a bit of a crash term, they kind of blew, they blew the load way too quickly. Uh, way too soon. It's, it, it got way too good from the very beginning. I like the premise. I like the story. I like everything about this comic. And I feel for the character. I mean, it's hard for me to say this, but, I honestly didn't want Sombra to turn evil. I mean, there's so many... He was such a... Ah, this story is... It's it's hard. It's hard. And just imagine, like, for me, saying this without even going in depth, and I already like the good Sombra kind of deal here. It's like, oh, uh, well, just, just amazing. And clearly you can tell that I like this comic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my opinion, they should call this comic uh, "Friendship is Magic: A Series of, of Unfortunate Events," <laughs> uh, because it doesn't start well, it doesn't continue well, and it definitely doesn't end well. This is uh, this is the only comic on the entire series that has a PG-12 rating on the Comixology app. That the, the I. I I want to think they will take the sh the series and the comics onto this dark uh, route more often than not. I really hope to see something like that, like this again, because if Hasbro approved this, I'm pretty sure they will approve anything at this point. Well, anything within reason, you know. <laughs> let's let's not go gory in here, guys. Uh, but this is the closest we're gonna have to a green dark story within the universe of uh, of Friendship is Magic, and. There is, it's surprising to me that they are using King Sombra. I like this comic a lot, by the way. I really like it. I think it was genius. But if we're going to talk about it, we better uh, uh, warn everybody that we are going to go into spoilers right now. So if you haven't read the comic, uh, pause this, go back, read it, and then come back. Because seriously, it is worth it. We, we all three can agree on that. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, pause here before you go. Uh, before you listen to the spoilers, so 
Okay, if you're still there, that means you have already read the comic. So if you're still listening and you haven't read it, it's your problem, not ours. Don't come suing us later. Um, uh, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just walked into that one. So, um, we start the comic, uh, in the, uh, in the main room of the Crystal Empire where Twilight is opening up the, the passageway to that endless st- uh, staircase going down onto the uh, supposed basement of the crystal palace and i like right away that how they how they portray the use of the dark magic i mean the way that twilight describes it it looks like it's something that could hurt it, she she says it hurts my head i don't like to use it i i'm sorry but i really like that neat little touch but also caden says she can't make it work which is going to be important for the end of the story. Cadence is completely unable to access Sombra's uh, secrets, so she must call on her sister. And I still find it funny when Twilight says, we're sisters, remember? <laughs> uh, when you call, I come running. It's like, Twilight is more excited to have Cadence as a sister-in-law than she is to have Shining Armor as an actual blood brother. <laughs> you know, like, we we all have that scenario where we live with that one person for so long that we got, well, we get bored. Like, yeah, I know, I seen you in your underwear. So, yeah, I don't really need to. <laughs> so, yeah. And Cadence, like, oh, God, something new. Oh, yes, let's, let's just hang out. Now, oh, girl time. Yay. <laughs> but the point where the comic makes about uh, accessing dark magic or this kind of magic hurts Twilight's head, I've been reading a lot of fanfics and they describe the dark magic to be accessing the evil side of the magic and how it could corrupt you and whatnot and them coming close to this not bad it it kind of makes sense from a from a thematic point of view that it will feed on your anger and it will feed on your ah let it feed on your rage uh it kind of feels like a Jedi using powers to ache into the dark side. I've been watching a lot of Star Wars lately, by the way. Oh, <laughs> but it, it kind of feels like that. Uh, at least that's how we want to see it. But as uh, Twilight opens up the um, the basement, they go down the stairs, um, hearing a little tinkling sound that they are kind of like confused. What is that? Uh, never mind. And they uh, they reach the door that was supposed to be the one that was alive, kept escaping Twilight, and. Uh, using a spell similar to the one that opened up the other staircase, the one that went up forever, the, um, they managed to open up uh, 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 Sombra's own office with a bust of himself, a throne, and a diary on a uh, uh, on a on a desk. And I have to say, how does Twi- I wonder how does Twilight know that will open up the the office and not the room to the um, infinite staircase? Well, maybe there's more than one door, mm-hmm. and maybe probably more than one passage. Although I do, I do love Twilight's line: "Do bad guys keep journals?" <laughs> I just, I just envision Sombra lying on a sofa with a little sherry, uh, sipping glass. <laughs> Dear diary, today I was feel I'm getting chubby. No, f- no food for the kingdom for three days. That'll slow me down. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine Discord keeping a journal? Dear diary. Banana, banana, fun, uh, I don't know, <laughs> fireman hat, uh, uh, orange. You there be, you go. You've been playing with a lot of <laughs> emojis, haven't you? I have no but idea. There, but the scene where Twilight opens the door, this is that cut material I was talking about. Uh, apparently, in an interview, uh, Jeremy Wheatley said that he wanted to have two pages devoted where Cadence received a dark vision, the way Twilight did at the Crystal Empire. Mm-hmm. Ooh. She, she would see herself and Shining Armor as tyrannical rulers, just like Sombra, complete with black armor and uh, green, green eyes, mm. uh, controlling the Crystal Ponies. And it would be her worst fear. And unfortunately, it was cut because one length and two, this is meant to be Sombra's uh, story, not Cadence's, mm. which <laughs> I'll bring that point up in later issues. But I'm sorry that they didn't include that because I've always wanted to know what is Cadence afraid of? What's her worries? You know, she, right now she's so easygoing about everything. It's like, are you real? 
<laughs> you have no conflicts. <laughs> uh, she does, Where are she your does. concerns? <laughs> She does, but it doesn't. It's not on screen. We, uh, personally, I will always say that Cadence has that um, has never been shown in a um, conflictive way or like uh, dealing with a lot of problems. Because every time that we have seen her, it's been like in public or making a public appearance. And in those points, leaders have to look uh, regal and s- and uh, sure of themselves. If they suddenly have Cadence pulling out less on zero Twilight. Uh, in front of every single crystal pony, I'm pretty sure that the empire will go will go down under. At, at least logically, that will happen. I want to bring up one more thing because okay, we see them accessing the throne or Sombra's secret clubhouse via the throne room, but <laughs> <laughs> but couldn't they try and get access through the other labyrinth? Like, didn't they have that one ghost person with them now that's t- taking care of the library? Uh, I think they don't want to admit that that exists. Well, it does oh. in this continuity, so why not, right? <laughs> well, maybe they don't, maybe the tunnels don't connect, or they asked and he's like, oh, I don't know anything about it. Hmm, probably. Or maybe they got info from him on how to get into the room. Well, so I think that will be against the tone of the comic, because if you, uh, we're gonna go, Deeper into it. We're all, we're only on page two uh, already, yeah, yeah. and we're well, we're on page four technically, but two of the story. And what happened on this detail? Now I like it because this comic is very dense. Yeah. It gives you that much to work with, mm-hmm. and it, it gives us a lot of material because, like I said, uh, we had the friends forever with Twilight and Shining Armor, and that's part of the Crystal Empire lore, at least for the comic fandom. That is. I guess that from a tonal point of view, the 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 comic doesn't need that, uh, because I mean, it, it, the, that one, the one with Shannon Arbor and Twilight, that one had a happy end and it was good, it was cheerful, uh, and it was very positive. This one isn't any of those. Mm-hmm. But let's go, let's let's keep going uh, onto the next part because this is where the comic starts getting even more interesting because they find that diary that is um, resting on that desk. And they start reading it, and it's written in first person. It, this is Sombra's diary. And it's it's funny that it starts right away with him explaining the origins of his name, because it's the only thing he remembers when uh, uh, when he simply appeared. He was found outside of the Empire, uh, saying that uh, he doesn't remember having a family, and the only thing he remembers is Sombra. And that's how the king of all monsters named himself. I also just want to po- again to point out that sort of a theme. Cadence opens up and says, okay, you evil pony. It's like, okay, wow, Cadence. Glad to know you're going into this with an open mind. <laughs> well, he is evil. You're not biased or anything. Well, either way. <laughs> On we go. Yes, yes. So, uh, we... Uh, we start with uh, how he was found outside of the Empire, how he was uh, taken in um, in a foal center, and uh, how he was being taught the language, how he was studying all that, and uh, how he was progressing on, on learning how to speak. Uh, which I think this is actually a pretty neat attempt that the comic does uh, to uh, to present the character with a bit of hu- quote unquote humanity. You know, for a pony, I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it is a funny detail here. I don't know if we ever see him using magic throughout the entire comic. I don't think so. No, uh... wait, there is a moment where he's using magic, yes. But right away, he's, he's writing with his mouth. He's not using magic at all. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. That could be explained because he don't know who he is. He lost his memory, per se. And he doesn't really know anything besides his well saying the word somber like a pokemon and not knowing alphabets and whatnot so he's <laughs> slowly getting there for him to access magic it'll be well slowly slowly but surely i want to think that he's a spanish so he's having trouble learning english <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> well well he's called sombra for a reason uh then uh and as uh, as we see him uh, progressing and all that, we see that the other ponies don't really like him and like shun him. They call him sombrero. I mean, really, <laughs> really. 
Good. Really? Yeah, yeah, get away, Sombrero. We don't want any pony to see us with the weird pony. Yeah, the crystal ponies are not a terribly innovative lot. <laughs> yeah, not only that, but I kind of like, I kind of like sort of frown at this because it's a cliche that I really hate. Though it does happen in real life, you know, because children can be jerks. And they, um, they are not going to like the, the weird little kid that has, that is just, you know, they're, they're not gonna like this change student. He's weird, he has a weird accent, we don't like him. And one of the reasons he doesn't, he, they don't like him, among others, is that he doesn't have a cutie mark. Boo. Or that he's not a crystal pony. Mm. Yeah, or that he's not crystal, he's just regular looking. And he's then approached by this, uh, this one, uh, this one cute little mare, whose name is escaping me now. Her name is Hopewell. Radiant Hope. Radiant Hope. That's that's it. Radiant Hope, and she doesn't have a cutie mark either. And in her, Sombra finds um finds a new friend. So they become real close friends, actually. Going around, sending each other messages, playing in the playing in the playground, pretending that they're fighting dragons, having very natural sounding arguments, actually. <laughs> He eat it. You want? He eat it. You now. He didn't. I used my magic spells on him. He didn't care. You eat it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sounds like a standard Friday night magic. It does. It does uh, sound very childlike. I actually like how natural their dialogue uh, comes across. And both together, they are looking forward to the crystal fair, and they are saving up. Uh, they are saving up gems for it. Which, by the, that's where we see him using the magic. By the way. And how odd, his magic is blue. What a contrast for what he's going to become, uh, what he is going to turn into later. Oh, true that, true that. Yeah. And uh, here we have more uh, more lore about the uh, birth of the Empire and how it, uh, the Crystal Fair works and uh, the purpose of it for uh, for spreading love all over Equestria. And I think this is what you, meant, what you were talking about before, Silver, about how this, this comic fleshes out the Crystal Empire more than season four and five uh, have done so far? Well, yeah, some of it, but actually it's more the way the foals behave that fleshes it out, that this is, this comic is going to show more of a black mark on the Crystal Empire than anything else. Also the fact that Sombra will never be adopted. The whole point of a foal center, I thought, would be to connect them with adoptive pa- foster parents. You clearly have not seen Scootaloo. I, I, don't, I don't go with that headcanon. I don't go without her cannon either. She obviously has a house. And a bridge. <laughs> oh, I'm just being mean today. Shut up, Norman. Why, why, are, you, why are you hating on the Scootaloo? You scooter hater. Uh, it's just so easy. Mm. It's easy to hurt you as well. You don't have to travel there and kick your, uh, kick your ass. Uh, <sighs> and then after, let's go have lunch. Oh, uh, dear. Uh, oh, God. Uh, boo. But yeah, they do explain the way that the fair works and how it um uh, how it needs to have the presence of the princess, and then they go see the crystal heart, and this is this is one of those this is one of those moments that you realize oh god this comic isn't going to end well, isn't it? Yep. When uh, Sombra is looking at the heart and uh, Radiant Hope is also looking at it, and she sees herself as a, a regal, probably f- future princess. While Sombra sees himself as the evil overlord that he's going to turn into. And what a contrast right there. The way that that panel is set up is just awesome. Mm-hmm. But too bad that it's covered by the small text, like literally I know kind of thing over there. Like if that would have been a full page spread, that would be awesome. I don't know. I think it kind of works because it's, it's just hope and Sombra. There's not a lot of, it keeps the eye focused. Mm-hmm. One other thing this comic reveals is we really are going for the Disney princess roster, aren't we? I, I'm trying to count how many princesses are being established between this comic and the rest of the series. There's <laughs> Platinum, there's Platinum, Radiant Hope. We're about to meet another princess. The four princesses of the modern time. <laughs> plus, if you want to get really nitty gritty, the Hearts and Hooves Day princess. Disney at least needed eight movies to get that many princesses. <laughs> and another thing that Disney didn't do, uh, four, uh, 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 four characters' son, and all the characters are princesses. 
in the season four finale. That's something that Disney has never done. Every single time that they had a singing number, it was with one princess, perhaps a princess and the and the prince. <laughs> but that's it. Oh, they'll catch up soon. They'll catch up <laughs> soon. Ah, uh, who knows? Well, Princess Leia is now part of their um part of the rooster as well. Uh, oh, she's, really she's been as, she's been assimilated. <laughs> she's been assimilated. Disney anyway. assimilating everything. Yes. Uh but I love how the how these. Uh, by the way, we haven't noticed, we haven't mentioned the art of Brenda Hickey in this uh, in this comic so far, and we should bring it up because of what's going to happen on the towards the final pages. This is the same artist who did the Pinkie Pie and Twilight Sparkle Friends Forever comic, and with how crazy and how insane the art style was on that one, and uh, how colorful and happy and cheerful. Whenever it goes dark in this one. It feels very legit. I mean, I I don't know if it has happened to you guys, but sometimes artists, uh, they can only do one or the other. They cannot do both. They can either do cutesy, woodsy, or super dark and gritty. Like quite personally, I don't imagine um, I I I don't imagine Andy Price doing uh, <laughs> doing something that is as crazy as the Twilight and and Pinkie Pie uh, Friends Forever comic, but. For the dark and greedy part, he work, uh, his art works fine. But for Brenda Hickey, she can do both. Which is good, which is good. Yeah. So, Sombra is scared, he's freaked out, and walks backwards and crashes onto a, a new princess, Princess Amore. And he's like, wow, look at that. She's not an alicorn. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like being an alicorn is something special. <laughs> Which is not anymore. <laughs> no, no. It's special when you have to sell toys. Yeah. Um, God, we're being, we're being very cynical today. Uh, especially myself. But this, this is, um, this is something interesting in that, well, look at that. The Crystal Princess. The, the, the success, the, the one that came before, uh, before Princess Cadence. And according and, to the, according to the journal, the two sisters, the one who discovered the Crystal Heart. Ooh. Oh, so the, the, oh, oh the, you you did read the Journal of the Two Sisters? Yeah, it took all of ten minutes. Yeah. It's, a kid's, oh. it's a kid's book. Uh, <laughs> it, it, this Princess Amore mentioned only once in it. She found the crystal heart in a mountain, but it was stolen by a dragon, and even that brief period of disconnect uh, affected her terribly. So basically, it was just a rehash of the Crystal Empire mixed with. Uh, Dragon shy. That's kind of that's kind of my big criticism. All the events in the journal are just rehashed versions of the TV show events. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they mention it. They mention that basically the Crystal Heart is the Arkenstone. <laughs> oh, okay. And it was stolen by a dragon, which means that Equestria had its version of Smog, <laughs> who was defeated not by a battle of five armies, but Celestia using the royal Canterlot voice. What? <laughs> Celestia gave him the smackdown. She, she gave him a talking down. Oh, wow. And he was bawling like a baby. I want to see the voice actor for Sherlock uh, not... crying like a little... That's not a word! ...in front of Celestia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm just making you all picture that now. You, you will need a combination of Celestia and Luna because Benedict Cumberbatch is, 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 is undefeated. I <laughs> am Khan! Now, now Benedict Cumberbatch, you sit in the corner thinking you're dead. But I'm gone. <laughs> no, you're not. You're Alan Turing. Shut up. <laughs> oh, gosh. I am a bit unfocused on that one. I'm, I'm not sure because there is a lot of text. There is a lot of dialogue in this in this one comic, more so than usual. Although it's not ungranted because they are talking about destiny and seeing visions and what did you see in the crystal heart. Oh, I saw nothing. Nothing. Just... Something weird, I don't, I don't know. And she tells Sombra that whatever he saw, he has the power to change it. And that's something to take into account for later on in the comic when we when we reach the end. Because he leaves, uh, walks away, and on the next page, right when the Crystal Fairies is starting, uh, he wakes up only to find out that he cannot move, that he's uh, he's paralyzed, that. Uh, some something that he can only describe as some sort of terror creeps inside of him, and he only gets worse as the fair keeps going. And this is an aspect of the comic that I actually find fairly dramatic. The fact that he wants to go to the Crystal Fair, but he can't, because he keeps getting sick. 
And by the way that they portrayed, it looks like it really hurts. Oh, yeah, tears and sweat. And only Radiant Hope stays by his side. Even Miss Chestnut, who seems like a nice pony enough, but even every pony goes to the Crystal Fair. This is the fair that says you're a member of our community. And yeah. he's not allowed to go. I because just, I he's want to in stress bed. that. He, he's in bed and he cannot move. One can only, well, it is clear that uh, his ailment is connected to the Crystal Heart. So if he gets near it, who knows? Maybe if he, the closer he might get to it, he will be destroyed. Um, which is something that we're going to see in the following pages, actually. But it is so funny to, it's so funny in the weird way that Radiant Hope is the only one staying with him. And that she also is missing the fair. So for all we know, she is never, she's not going to the fair either. Throughout all these years. Nope, he's, he's more important to her. Yeah. Imagine, imagine missing the fair all of those years and then finally that, the, uh, when he, I think he finally is, uh, a grown up, uh, pony or at least, um, uh, a teenager or something like that. He looks like it. Uh, it gets, it gets to the point where he, he gets so sick, he actually starts to disappear. He starts turning into shadow. And that is, okay. Looking at this page, page 15. Children's comic. Yeah, right. No. That is something out of, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of a movie called The Cell. That is the cell levels of nightmarish horror. <laughs> He's falling apart, literally, with wow. tendrils of darkness coming out of his body. And it looks like it, it really hurts. Well, you know, he's, he's pretty much crumbling, which is just yowza. Yeah, he's, he's been torn apart by the power of the crystal heart. And here's a glimpse. I, I love, I love how many implications are in this comic in every single page, but in this one, more, more, uh, evident than any other. You can see a glimpse of a possible future between these two because a radiant hope is able to cast a spell so powerful that it puts Sombra back together and brings him back to normal because you can actually you can even see his normal unicorn horn turning into the red and black horn that Sombra will have mm -hmm. uh as well as his eyes spewing that purple smoke and one could only imagine what would have happened if these two managed to stay together that maybe hope might have been able to keep Sombra in check and keep the darkness away but that wouldn't have happened because it wasn't part of the plan. Now you see, this is them trying to fight fate, and they cannot fight it back, because fate is stronger than them. But you have that neat little uh, uh, hint of what will have happened, only to discover that Radiant Hope managed to earn her cutie mark. That kind of seals the deal for me. They were meant to be together, but they cannot, they cannot, um, they cannot stay together. I'm talking a lot. <laughs> well, so. I'm, I'm actually going to take the opposite route. That uh, I agree that it, it's it, this will come into play later, but we're assuming he was always destined to be the villain. When this comic is trying to say you have a choice, but how, but man, how they phrase the choice just falls apart. Uh, so we'll we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, because um, to that point, when you're saying this, because I've been looking back and forward from this issue to the mainline story where the mirror arc is going on because I'm trying to see if there's any comparison between the two. It's like, what would have happened if he was good? Would it become that or just like thinking about how it would flow? And I got no idea. Well, the thing is, the, the, the mirror universe is just arbitrarily, you're good here, you're evil there. There's no... I love multiverse stories where they spring from a choice. Mm -hmm. but there is no choice. Uh, in the in the mirror universe storyline, you're just arbitrarily good and evil. With that in mind, like it's going to be hard to think about. Oh, like Sombra there is good, but Sombra here is bad. But he was good at the beginning. Was he bad at this? Like ah, uh, it hurts. Let's continue on. Don't try too hard. Let's just say everybody is now. Hope was sort of on the outs with Sombra. You know, they were both sort of social misfits. Now that she's got a cutie mark and has powerful magic, everybody loves her because they know they got to butter up to the princess, the future princess. Well, they don't really know that she's the future princess. Like, oh, they know, they know. No, she she very much is because when uh, 
she arrives with that letter with the royal sign uh sign on it and she looks so happy and Sombra looks so sad. He simply runs away. Well it but here's I, I want to stress my point. Uh let's see here. I knew it meant something special, but I couldn't figure out what until I saw how everyone else reacted. Then I realized that the ability to heal any ailment was powerful magic, and everyone knew what happened when a unicorn developed really powerful magic. Mm. And son of a gun, that's when she gets the letter. So, what can we infer for this? One, they know to butter up to the new princess. Two, there's a system to install princesses. <laughs> I, I have this waiting line in my head of, <laughs> of ponies waiting to be coronated because they've got powerful unicorn magic. No. And let's face it, when it's really it's early industrial development age, everybody's coming up with new stuff. But Silver, you're forgetting one aspect to that theory. Cadence. Cadence was much, much later. She's bright, she might be the first uh, Pegasus to ever become an alicorn. But here yeah. it just says, everyone knows what happens when a unicorn developed really powerful magic. And mm. this is even better. They'll become a princess. There's no mention of princes. So I'm going to assume that Rule 63 spell from uh, Magic Tool, which is totally legit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume that when a stallion showed great magical power, oh. he had to undergo more than a few changes. Oh, wow. And that's why Star Swirl never really became part of the monarchy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> He was like, no, no, no way I'm nope. giving that up. Oh. <laughs> oh, just imagine this headcanon thingy. He, he discovered powerful magic and he says, you know what? That city with the human beings, as they say, is pretty interesting. Jump there. Woohoo. And then he became Albert Einstein. Yep. <laughs> just trying to picture the, the system to make everybody who shows any exceptional talent a princess. Oh my god! And then yes, Cadence comes along and she's a unicorn and she's so super special OC. <laughs> well you well you you will have to think about it for a moment is that she is clearly uh, she's clearly a good character in that she has a good heart. She's looking for the safety of others. Uh she is a valuable asset to the, the world of Equestria. And I'm pretty sure that sooner or later they're gonna have to find a substitute to, uh, to Princess Amore. Mm -hmm. Because Princess Amore is not an alicorn, she's a unicorn. So, mm -hmm. I don't think that, uh, means alicorn, instant princess, you can also be a unicorn and be a princess. Princess Platinum is also a unicorn as well. So, and it is, it is said that unicorns are not meant to live forever. They eventually die. They might live more because of you know magic i don't have to explain mm -hmm. baloney uh but something tells me that they need to assure as a line of succession uh the same way that you are indented to the to the throne as soon as you are born into um royalty however princess amore doesn't seem to have a husband that doesn't seem to be a, a prince or a king in charge of the crystal empire it's just princess amore and she doesn't seem to have children either the princesses will have to assure a line of succession. Well, that we know of. They might have to keep, keep into account, okay, we need a crystal pony because it's the crystal empire crystal pony. But all, all I'm saying is that if it's common knowledge that a powerful unicorn becomes royalty, that means they're pretty lousy with royalty at this point. <laughs> There's probably like a princess-only theme park, which has full <laughs> attendance. Uh, and I just, I'm picturing, wow, Dirt Sniffer, you were, you're... Magic has really helped agriculture. Congratulations, you're now Princess of Dirt. <laughs> oh, hey, what's so bad about dirt, huh? Mm. Oh, you have you have anything against earth ponies? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, just the oh. political mudslinging that goes with it. <laughs> Is this just... Oh! You, you, you. But now that we've humble gotten down, origin... down and dirty... <laughs> Oh. Humble origins can give a, a, a humble princess, Applejack princess of apples for season six. God damn it. Uh, <sighs> let's get back on track, guys. We're way, way off track here. This is the summer runs away! Run away! <laughs> yeah, so, summer runs away from the, from the empire, runs away from everyone. And uh, how interesting, before everything goes to, um, before everything goes to hell, this is the last interaction that he's going to have with Radiant Hope. And, it, it, when you think about it, they, they, this is the last page they're going to be together and they're going to be happy. 
just for just for that one panel. Right after, uh, Sombra runs away so far away from the Empire that he ends up crashing uh, onto um, he he ends up collapsing on on the snow. Which, it makes me wonder, the Empire has always been surrounded by snow? Well, beyond the shield, yeah. Mm-hmm. Beyond the shield. Yeah, but in the, in the current, uh, the current iteration, the way that the Empire is right now, it's, it has nothing but green prairies and happiness and sunshine and rainbows and flowers and daisies all over the place. Now it's all covered in snow around it, which makes me wonder, is, is probably a seasonal thing? Maybe, probably, and or then, they made a deal with Canterlot. Or hmm. I, I figure that the shield has extended to include the train station, but they are in the frozen north. Mm-hmm. And while you can maybe create a little pocket for the safety of your subjects, you can't go changing the whole of nature. And here comes the one part of the comic that, from what I heard and from what I read in the comments on um, every review that I go to, seems to be the most controversial of them all, is that Sombra ends up crashing onto his mother right di- right away because he f- he finds uh the 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 a dark red crystal and the crystal basically t- through a, a lot of dialogue that can basically re- uh, summarized as i am your mother search That's your feelings you know it to be true that's no. impossible no no i mean, i mean that's physically impossible how does a crystal give birth to a pony the physical dynamics <laughs> uh one does not ask well but i'm but, asking yeah. i'm here and in, i'm asking the question in my uh, in my in, oh okay what answer me curse you i don't know <laughs> magic i don't have to in answer my, you in my humble opinion I actually like this concept a lot. I mean, all physical impossibilities aside, I like the idea, I like the concept of someone uh, being born from just pure evil, but not wanting to be evil in the first place, or not knowing if he's meant to be evil or not. I... Should I drive a parallelism between... Should I draw a parallelism between Luke Skywalker... No, no, Anakin Skywalker and King Sombra here? Uh... Because no, I very much to. can. You <laughs> remember a... how Anakin didn't have a father, and uh, according he was according to the the lore of the movies, he was conceived by the Force itself. Oh God, no! Oh, by, by the parasites that live within your body that claim to be uh, the Force. I swear, <laughs> do, mention those things again, and I will I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> Midichlorians come ah! I am going to I, I'm going to execute my vengeance upon thee when we meet in person. <laughs> come at me, bra. <laughs> Americans. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, but yeah, personally, I think I, I I find this concept very unique, um, very interesting. Although they don't explain, they, they don't explain it too much, despite all of the dialogue that they put under. But what do you guys think of of, of this one scene in particular? The how does a crystal birth a pony? I am not letting this go. <laughs> ah. magic! Uh, you don't have to explain anything. Yeah, I mean, th- th- there are limits to where how far that will go. No, you don't. Well, you know how that um. You know how the, uh, we we have brought the Bible before in the in the uh, in the review show, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the Bible uh, here again. Well, you know how uh, in in the Bible it is said that uh, God created man from um, uh, from clay, right, or mud? What what was it? It was clay, right? So yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah. So would it be so far fetched that uh, a force, an energy that is so powerful it acquires conscience despite it not having a a, a body? Being just a presence, could it be possible that it takes uh, some crystals, turns it into a into a pony, and gives it life? Is it that far fetched within this universe? Because is it there, is clear that uh, considering we on. haven't seen ponies make a pony from from nothing, yeah, it's, it's still a little wah. And well, yeah, like, uh, uh, here's your Bible passage, and the big red crystal begat Sombra, <laughs> and it was freaky. <laughs> Wait, the Bible says that? Wow, I need to read the Bible more often. It's badass. Are you kidding? Everybody in the Bible's begatting. This dude's begetting this dude, and this dude begat that dude, and that dude begat this this kid, and the kid went on to do real stuff and begat, begat, begat. 
<laughs> but there was if, there wasn't what to do back then. <laughs> if the if the crystal heart meant to uh, the crystal heart, yes, is that is that is a piece of crystal that is shaped like a heart. There you go. But it is clear that the nemesis of uh, King Sombra is the opposite. If the crystal heart is the light, King Sombra is the shadow. I mean, they 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 can't the, the, and the light eventually, even though the light creates the shadow, the light will will vanquish it. In the you know the typical good versus evil scenario that uh, exists uh, exists in many legends, but uh, when it comes to that, if the crystal heart w- would be alive, then why wouldn't a dark heart uh, exist as well? And that will be King Sombra himself. Mm, I, I got no argument or I got no comment on that because I kind of want to know more about this dark crystal that they have here because the concept of the dark crystal creating life that I can buy because magic, don't ask. And for Sombra to have everything that happened to him, I can see where it went wrong and how he felt. And for him to just jump on the boat and say, yes, I want to be evil. Well... And think about where Sombra is coming from. He is embracing this as his destiny after the the only friend that he has uh, obtains her cutie mark and it's probably going away forever, losing her. Mm-hmm. After an entire lifetime of not, of not knowing what to do or where to where he's going, he finally has a purpose. Mm-hmm. So he embraces that purpose with both hands. Well, you know, hands, hoops, whatever. Mm-hmm. But he embraces that purpose and he goes with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I... and and he doesn't, he, and he is not going to fight against it yeah, because he has a purpose. He has a goal. He has a destiny. Yeah, this is what I am meant to do. I, true that. I mean, I I totally agree with the concept there. But uh, let me propose this to you guys. What if everyone in the Crystal Empire was nice to him, was friendly, was, you know, like, just friendly, like a normal person should be without being a jerk. And Radiant Hope was the love of his life and they talk about stuff and they were in a relationship or something like that. And yeah, but then Norman... getting the letter saying, okay, this is not goodbye, this is me just going yeah, away Nor- for a Norman. while. Norman, but that's not this story. I know. This is not a happy story. This is meant to end bad. Sombra dies at the end of the Crystal Empire Part 2. Technically, maybe. We have yet to reach the end of this comic. But this is not a story that ends well. This is going to have a very, very sad, very dark ending when you think about it. Because the, the only the only way to go around this issue is with the Crystal Empire being banished. Yeah, I, I know, but the the proposal I made was, what if things turn out differently? I mean, yeah, but then again, have... you 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 say that you can say that about so many different stories. Like, what if Anakin Skywalker turned to the good side instead of the dark side? What if he instead of becoming a Sith Lord, he becomes a Jedi Master? What would have happened? That's not the story that's going on here. You you are now talking about the story that you want to hear, not the story that you that you are reading now. No, I mean, I, I'm just proposing a situation. If things were different, things could have been well different. Let's say, but now the story here is now he accepted the dark side and has spooky smoke powers. Well, it's it's the futility of trying to fight against your destiny. And Silver, you have fallen very quiet. Is everything okay over there? I'm just letting you two hash it out. Go at it. <laughs> now kiss and make up. Oh, no. No, thank behold, you. Normally behold, the, ship, the shippers there. Meanwhile, I will, just tr- I will just try not to picture Sombra emerging from his quist- crystalline womb. <laughs> You're still on it, are you? I found a tangent, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> but I will... At the end of this, I am going to talk about Sombra... Okay, we keep talking about fate, that this is your fate, this is your destiny, you're destined to become evil. In which case, everything about our ponies just sounds worse, because how fair is that to a person when they're destined to be evil, no matter what their own intentions? But I don't believe in absolute destiny that it just happens because it's meant to. I think Sombra made a choice. He made a choice based on experience. It is the fault of the crystal ponies. 
and that's the black mark upon them that he he didn't trust them, but he also chose not to tr- trust Radiant Hope. So more on that later. Let's talk about actually stealing the Crystal Heart like yes. a thief in the night. <laughs> this part actually kind of makes me scratch my head. The most powerful element and an, an artifact in all of the Crystal Empire, and it can be held contained in a burlap sack. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well done. Uh, it, but he's... It's, it's actually made a hemp. The crystal heart is high right now, dude. <laughs> mm. But uh, I I also like how kind of like dorky he kind of looks with the burlap sack around his neck. Although, then again, where else will you put it that it doesn't look weird? Uh, though, I like this, this, uh, this uh, dialogue that he has with Princess Amore and how she's actually, she still believes that there is some goodness in him. There is something good in him, left in him that he can change back. He can go back to normal. He can, he can be better than this. But Sombra is not having none of this and turns Princess Amore into crystal. And that, that is freaky. I, say what you will. That statue that used to be Princess Amore is just terrifying. Well, this is the part of the here. Yeah, this is the part of the comic that goes full dark. Right now we are on we are on Tim Burton territories of darkness. Like when Tim Burton does something that is legit dark and creepy. It gets only worse when Radiant Hope catches him uh, uh doing this. And I I love the next panels because Radiant is all like she's she's desperate. She's she has to feel so impotent because she wants to save the princess and she wants to save Sombra but she can't do either, because Sombra is beyond help, and Princess Amor is even more beyond beyond help, despite how much she's begging, despite how much she's pleading. This is something that she cannot stop from happening. And I love the way that she's drawn. Like, she's she, she reminds me of Connie Nielsen in Gladiator with her performance, actually, in this one. I forget that she's a, a drawn cartoon on a, on a comic book. <laughs> I, I'm the only one speaking on the on the review of this comic. I feel so dorky. No, no, no. I, I, I think to add because whatever you're saying is pretty true. I mean, what can I add here? The scene is awesome. Sombra yeah. zapping Princess Amore, turning her into crystal, and later on smashing it into a billion pieces and spreading them all around. God, uh, that Westra. that is the closest this this series is going to get. To, mm, outright murder like right. okay turning her into crystal maybe she could revert the spell back but no she's shattered into pieces i mean look at that oh but this is the best part this is apparently according to a tweet from jeremy wheatley he had to put in this line i couldn't bring myself to destroy her but i spread the pieces of her statue all throughout the world maybe someone will restore her one day but i'll be too strong for her by then Okay, so uh, uh, somebody, presumably in the Hasbro department, said, you have to make sure the kids know she's not really dead. Hmm. So someone at Hasbro thinks that being broken into a million pieces and scattered around the world in a state of near death is less dark than being dead. Someone is a sick mama jama. You know what this means, right, Silva? Quest? One piece! Oy. <laughs> I, okay, I, 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 I do want to talk about Princess Amore real quick. Yes, herself. yes. Let's, yeah, I actually want to talk about her as well. In a way, because people, a lot of people agreed she was pretty dumb in how she confronted Sombra. Yeah, I knew you were suffering. It was hilarious. No. Uh, wow, going a little Captain Janeway there for a minute. <laughs> your, your suffering was almost as good as Harry's. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Uh, she talked about Sombra having a choice, but she doesn't say what that choice was. The choice he got presented with is either steal the crystal heart or die. That's it. <laughs> that's the that's the way the choice was framed for his freaky crystal and mom. So I and this is a guy who's been neglected and ostracized by the crystal ponies. He's not a crystal pony. He's not allowed to go to the fair. No one reached out to try and adopt him, apparently. Everything they've said to him is, you're not one of us. You don't belong here. You uh, are not welcome. So, 
why would he want to give his life to protect these ponies? They're not, we make our own villains, and they made him. Now, the flip side, though, is that he also chose not to trust Radiant Hope, the one pony who has always stayed with him, and who actually saved him from destruction. He, I think mostly because he's afraid, he didn't trust in her. Now, Princess Amore says, oh, you have a choice, I'm here to offer you that choice again. I think she was blinded by her own empire, that she thought, oh, as long as he knows how to choose, he'll obviously he'll choose us, we're awesome. And that assumption cost her. I couldn't agree more because in the very beginning, we the way those ponies acted around him and the way how different he is, like there's this biasness about him. Like he's not Crystal. He doesn't have a cutie mark. And he's that one weirdo guy that we see off the street a few times and we want to stay away from. So obviously he's going to choose what his quote-unquote crystal mother gave absolute power well i kind of see where you guys are coming but i'm not sure if i completely agree with your point of view uh is that this is uh obviously this is not the the, the theme of the comic the theme of the comic is not about choice the theme of the comic is not about um choosing whether one or the other they are they are touching upon that because the characters think that's what the comic is about. But that, that's not what the comic is about. The comic is about the, the characters fighting against, uh, against a conclusion that they cannot stop from coming. That eventually the Crystal Empire is going to be punished. That eventually Sombra is going to turn evil. That Princess Amori is going to get killed and the Crystal Heart is going to get, get lost. That the Empire will be lost for a thousand years and will not be recovered until Twilight is sent by Princess Celestia to, t- to, to, to bring it back and, okay. and recover it. But- but then Twilight will have the choice of whether or not to let Spike take the Crystal Heart? Because if you, because if you well, say destiny, they're all destined to do this, then Twilight never really had any choice or free will herself. Di- we're, ba- we're basically just watching a bunch of puppets. Different choice, different, different, uh, different position. It's something well, that, it's something that, yeah, different choice, different position, because Twilight was not born into, into this. She, Technically stumbled upon it by mistake. If you follow the the the, the storylines of the comics, you will know that she wasn't the first choice of student for Princess Celestia. That was Sunset Shimmer. Uh, and if you think about it, the way that Sombra is put into this position, he wasn't he wasn't created to have a choice. He wasn't uh, built to uh, choose to be good. He was built to be evil. He was built to be bad. It's no way that he will not be able to escape this. He like was Discord? Well, no, Discord was just born out of chaos. Basically yeah, he Discord was, was destined to yeah, spread disharmony. Well Discord was built to have fun. Because he's not evil, he's not like ha ha now I'm going to take all over I'm going to be powerful. No, Discord is the kind of guy who drops a sack of flour on your head and then a bucket of water just because it's funny. And then he turns into bubbles. Why? Because chaos. But now King Sombra was built to be part of the plan. The plan of this Umbra army hidden under the empire. Because if the crystal ponies are all too goody good two shoes and they are so nice and gentle and you are going to spread love all over, there needs to be an evil side to compensate. There has to be balance. You know, that there cannot be light without shadow or vice versa. Or else it could be just emptiness. There has to be an evil side to all of this. And f- for the good of the majority, usually the good has to stay over the bad. You know, continue with the basic storyline that Joseph Campbell says on his books. Uh, so, personally, I think that this is the characters fighting against the destiny that they cannot prevent from happening. Because it's it's been forced upon them that what? Radiant Hope is going to be exiled outside of the Empire when, when Sombra gets banished taking the Empire with him, that Sombra will be evil, that he will not be able to have a... He will never be able to have a a normal life. Well, I want to say that that is the attitude a lot of people take towards actual history. That because this is how events played out there, obviously it was always meant to happen. And we tend to... But we, in the present, think we have free choice. What I'm seeing in this story 
is a guy who, yes, he was made by the crystal, by the umbrum. We never did name them. The umbrum army that's technically right underneath the crystal pony's feet. <laughs> uh, he was made for that, but he was also given the ability to choose. And that's what uh, Amore tried to convey to him, but she wasn't very smart about it. I think Celestia is off on the side taking clip notes. Okay, this is how I'm not supposed to manipulate my future students. <laughs> but I maintain that Sombra did have the ability to choose, and he could have chosen to not follow his mother's instructions. But he had no reason. The ponies made their – the crystal ponies were brought down by Sombra, but also by their own hubris. And so it's part of what makes this equal parts tragedy and – uh, history. And uh, I'll get into my own history with Radiant Hope after this. But basically, Sombra is now letting, if he's the monster of the Crystal Ponies, he's now reveling in it. Because he had no other way to, uh, to, to embrace his destiny. Remember that, uh, according to the, the, the lore, the, sh- the, the show's lore, if you don't have a cutie mark, you don't have a, you don't have a purpose. You need oh. to have a cutie mark to have a purpose. But who right? says you, who says you have to be an umbrum and be the enemy of the crystal ponies? He was getting because, along with her just fine. Because in that, in that point, in that position, after losing his, fr- his only friend, after like, oh, uh, but he hasn't lost it, her. He hasn't uh, lost her. That's the thing. He's a frail loser. Yeah. This is the that, well, fear controlling him. Th- uh, think of it from a, from a storytelling point of view. Don't think of it in, from like, um, like, uh, oh, they could have changed history because if they could have changed history, then, uh, Cadence and Twilight will be reading a, a, a diary that belongs to an alternate universe interpretation. Oh, but like, see, here's the thing. This is show lore. We know he's going to make the wrong choice, but this is more why he made that choice. Not, oh, he could have made it. He, this is what would have happened if he hadn't. He made this, a choice out of fear and impotence, actually. He made a choice. Exactly. He's afraid of losing his friend. He's afraid of being alone. So he, and he, now he's afraid of dying, which, hey, fair, fair point. Uh, but, what we haven't gotten to the last page, and that's kind of where I want to really bring this up. Oh, and, okay. In that, and perhaps in that the case, true, the true tragedy. Well, before we go to the last page, I actually have to ask you: you, you did read the, uh, the 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 Toilet Sparkle and the Crystal Heart books. You you have read all of the books, right? All of uh, the Jim Bert ones. Not all of them, but I read that one. The is is it possible that Princess Cadence maybe? came from one of those fragments that were spread all over the question belonging to Princess Amore? You know, people have put forth that idea, and it, it seems like an interesting one. She Actually, it's funny, the, the parallel between Cadence and Sombra as well. Cadence was a lone uh, pegasus found in the forest, uh, raised by earth ponies, until she saved the town from a... Oh, God, they actually used the term evil enchantress. Uh... That was part of the cringe of the Crystal Heart spell. And, mm-hmm. but, but she grew up surrounded by love and affection, mostly because she spread that. Uh, Sombra was an abandoned unicorn, found in the wasteland, raised by crystal ponies, but shunned. And that's why I wish we'd gotten to see that uh, hidden fear of Cadence to stress they've had two very similar lives with different outcomes. And I always love yeah. a villain that is a, a mirror to our, our hero. Also, if you see Princess Amore's hairstyle is very similar to Princess Cadence, the, the the curls and the way that the hair looks and all that, it it has a bit of that going on. I will be willing to admit that Princess Cadence is the reincarnation of Princess Amore, and that's why at the at the end of the Crystal Empire episodes they call Cadence the Crystal Princess. They see something in Cadence that reminds them of Princess Amore. Or yeah, they just I, see, or they just see a you, alicorn flying with a big crystal. I was like, okay, I'm not challenging it. <laughs> but yeah, finally, after uh, Sombra breaks Princess Amori into pieces, uh, Radiant Hope runs away to warn the the two princesses. As we see, the Empire has been put under the under the realm of uh, under the command of King Sombra. How it's uh, how Radiant Hope has been left outside of the Empire. And ha- now here we are at the end of the comic. And what did you want to, what did you want to, to bring up, uh, Silver? That, well, what, as, the thing that you wanted to ch- touch upon. 
as they're leaving, uh, Twilight says, I feel bad for him. He, he never got to see the Crystal Fair, and that's all he ever wanted. Kane's response with, that and to crush the Crystal Ponies under his hoof, I wouldn't feel too sorry for him, Twilight. Uh, two things. Twilight is seeming more sympathetic to what Sombra went through and, and why he fell. But she's oversimplifying it. Really, it's not, er, I never got to have a party, therefore I'll conquer the world. <laughs> Sombra, his whole life, up until that moment, was a whole community telling him, you're not one of us, we hate you. And one pony saying, I love you. And unfortunately, he, he listened more to the hate than he did the love. Well, so that's, that's his downfall. That uh, happens in real life, actually, and it goes even further than that. You know, the whole, yeah. you have 20 people telling you that you are great, but there is one guy who goes, you're a, that's not a word. The comment about the, that's not a word. The sticks more than the comment about everyone else loving you. Yeah, and that's the cautionary tale to focus on the love, not, uh, mm-hmm. oh, pardon me, I'm looking up a quote real quick. Yeah, focus There's on the a, appreciation, not on the, the appreciation. Yes, let's see here. Qu- quotes about villains, forgive me. But the other thing, though, is Cadence and her rather unsympathetic response. Now, if she's uh, if she is the reincarnation of Amor, she's like, that jerk broke me to pieces. Nuts to him. <laughs> but uh, let's assume for a moment that that's, that's our own little headcanon. But let's just say for a moment that she is an independent pony. The tragedy in this is that Cadence is so set in absolutes. Amore, in my eyes, was so dazzled by her own empire, she couldn't believe that Sombra wouldn't, uh, wouldn't choose otherwise. And so she stepped into a situation half blind. And as a result, she paid for it. It's also why she didn't really, she could have taken a more active role in helping give Sombra a, realize he had a better w- w- life available. Cadence is just viewing him as a villain. And it goes right back to the first page where she said, I can't use dark magic. She's so set in absolutes that I think she'd make the exact same mistake as Amore and the Crystal Ponies. And she doesn't want to believe her empire, in a way, helped create Sombra. Uh, Twilight is more open-minded. That's why she can use dark magic, even if it hurts. And as such, she's, as, this is very good for the Princess of Friendship, she's more open to empathy and understanding. And it's an interesting character study. Mm, true, true. And well, um, it's it, it's funny how almost everything kind of works against Princess Cadence. Uh, from every time that I hear people talk about Princess Cadence, it's always clash. It's always criticism. It's always never, never seen it from a different point of view. I'm getting kind of tired about the whole... Oh, let's hate on the Princess of Friendship. She has nothing going for her. I will be the first one to admit that Cadence is kind of like an uninteresting character. But what is so bad with being 100% uh, uh, good-hearted? Like, having no no ulterior motives, no hidden agendas. Yes, straight up going, yes, I am good. Like, the the, the, the usual, you know, stereotype of uh, benign good-hearted, good-intentioned, nothing but on them. And Cadence, Cadence fits that bill fairly well. Uh, I can totally see why she may come as an absolutist when it comes to opinions, but I think that she finds the idea... She finds what Sombra did so horrible, and let's not kid ourselves, okay? What he did was was horrendous. He put an entire empire under his control after killing their leader. And not only killing their leader, but killing their leader horribly, turning them to crystal and then shatter the, shattering the pieces. I mean, yeah, you know what? Not absolutist or anything, but Sombra didn't have the choice to become good. I think and, he did. I think he had the choice, and it, he chose not to, and that's the tragedy of his story. He didn't it, take it. Yeah, that's like I said, the tragedy. Mm-hmm. That's what makes this uh, a dark tale. It is a very dark tale. It has a dark conclusion. But they do present to you both points of views. But on the question of why why can't Keynes just be, I'm good? Because she is, she is a good pony. She's very nice. Uh, the thing, though, is that when you say, I am good, 
therefore you are evil, you kind of slam in the door on the other person. And mm-hmm. sometimes the be- the really good folk are the ones who can re- reach out. I mean, I grew up in the 80s in a time where the good guys were good and the bad guys were bad and never the two mixed. It was always, it was almost always absolutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, then I got into anime and especially with like Sailor Moon, <laughs> they'd offer a sympathetic story to the villain. And growing up, I was like, whoa, that's different. That's, I actually felt bad for the villain, even though they were doing terrible things. And you realize, you get older and you kind of realize, yeah, there's a little gray area. And you get a, fr- and you fear people who can't see that gray. Because when you, because then they'll act by extremes th- with the purest of intentions, but still dangerous. And that's not to be a slam against Cadence as a character. But it's also how her good heart and nature can undermine her. Yeah, but they won't. They, they will won't. not under. They, they will not undermine. Yeah, no, they will not. They will not undermine her. And Cadence is never going to uh, become evil in the show or uh, anywhere else. And I will tell you why. Because the way that they have built her, the way that they have put her together, and let's not kid ourselves, she was fabricated to sell toys. She was put in the show so they could sell white Princess Celestias and they could keep <laughs> selling uh, pink, prince, uh, pink Princess toys. That's, that's why we have Cadence in the show. There is no other reason. But the way that they have put her together, she is a benevolent, benign, good-hearted, kind, and interesting. Yeah, I will give you that. But she is good. Again, goes to the same thing. She doesn't have ulterior motives. She will be 100... She will be... Uh, uh, Lawful good. If we were to compare it with Dungeons and Dragons themes, she will be lawful good. And no, that, while but... Sombra will be lawful evil. Or maybe chaotic evil. Ooh, there. Okay. That's... Well, I, I want to say that, well, no, Discord wouldn't be chaotic evil. He will be chaotic neutral at this point. Yeah. Um, but, but, but to sort of turn that on its ear, a, a lawful good paladin would light a town on fire to cure, uh, like a zombie infection or some such. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, they tend to go by absolutes and that can, even though they mean everything in the best, it can turn against you. And I'm not saying Cadence is going to turn evil. She'll do horrible things, but that people complain she has no character flaws. Maybe that is the character flaw. The fact that, that she's, she's so perfect. That, well, I really hesitate to say that way, but she tends to view the world in very clear cut terms and maybe is just a little naive. Well, guys, you have to remember that we're talking from the comic canon here because oh. in show canon, she's a bit, well, underdeveloped. Well, she's she's a bit underdeveloped every which way. But uh, really, I think we've gone past talking about Cadence in general and more talking about an archetype. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. it, 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 that is that is not bad because that's how much this comic is giving you. The, the fact that you can talk about these kind of subjects based on a comic that is meant for little kids. Though it is giving you a very important cautionary tale right there. I mean, this is teaching a good lesson. The fact that you have to be careful about the environment that you uh, that you are raising people in, uh, because there is no other way to describe it. Sombra was uh, meant to be like that, because the environment built him to be like that, both by the crystal and by the crystal ponies. The, the dark crystal that that sort of like created him, and the crystal ponies that you know underappreciated him and not, didn't didn't like him. Mm, true, true. And, well, uh, how do I put this? Like, I've been hearing you guys talk, and to Caden's point where she said that uh, that and to crush the crystal ponies under his hoof, I wouldn't feel too sorry for him. Well, you have to look at her point of view, where her people were transported away to another dimension for a thousand years, and brought back by Twilight, and she had to save them from Sombra. And, well, she is going to look really negative towards the person who did all that to her people. Well, I wouldn't say that the Crystal Ponies are her people, but if we follow the the headcanon that she is a reincarnation of Princess Amore. I mean, it's, no, the, the point is, like, she is the princess of her nation, so... They are her people now because she needs to take care of them in 
every man of the world, from political, from government and whatnot. So she is their leader. But we're also, we're looking backwards, but, you know, this also, this comic also gives us stuff to look forward to. Mm, true. Because, one, okay, maybe Cadence is, is uh, reborn from the fragments. That's totally Probably. possible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or maybe uh, Amore's shards are still out there in a state of near death. Thank you, Hasbro executive who really needs counseling. Uh <laughs> What have we established from this? One, in the comic universe, at least, King Sombra is alive. Probably, yes, yes. As, oh, well, he's he's a shadow. His horn is apparently rolling around. Thank you, Thing. <laughs> and uh, and he actually says at the end, long live the king. Meanwhile, meanwhile the, the Umbrum army is still underneath the castle and even... Yeah, that's still there. Even Cadence and Shining Armor didn't know about it. Uh, no. I, hope no, I hope no one goes spelunking. <laughs> Personally, this is my favorite part of the comic, the... Um... The ending, where they show you the the horn and all that, they explain to you how Radiant Hope went to get uh, Celestia and Luna to help her save the Empire, and how Radiant was left outside of it. I mean, just imagine left outside of your ha- of your home, all your friends gone for a thousand years, and then you will just wither out and die because they don't say that the crystal that the crystal pony can live forever. They were just banished. For all we know, Radiant Hope died shortly thereafter. Probably. When you say, having to say goodbye to everything that you, to everything and everyone that you knew and love. Well, it's, I, if I could throw out a, a headcanon of my own just because I've had to, I've, I've enjoyed kind of wondering what happened to her. Let's say just for a moment that, yeah, she never became a princess in her own right because the, the shock of losing her home was just too awful. Uh, you know, she was, part of her was damaged for good. Oh, yeah. But, but Celestia and Luna knew that she was alone, so they took her under care, made sure she was settled, maybe helped steer him towards a, a stallion or two, <laughs> where eventually she found love again, married, had a foal, who had a foal, who had a foal, and all the way down the bloodline goes with that special magic from a pony who almost became princess, and by the way, was colored violet. And Princess Celestia maybe kept an eye on this lineage. Because one day, a pony, a violet pony with a slightly different mane was born and had a lot of magical potential. I like where you're going. I like where you're you're going. You're saying that most probably Twilight Sparkle is a descendant of Radiant Hope. I wouldn't say probably because I have no evidence. This is pure headcanon. But if I had to envision an ending for... Uh, Radiant Hope. There's a hundred other ways it could play out. Twilight may have unknowingly fulfilled an ancestor's desire to save her home. You know that I like that headcanon because well, it's it gives a it's a lot to... it's a lot it's a lot more hopeful haha than ah. uh, the, uh, the the ending that we're giving right here because when you really think about it, this is the darkest the comics ever got. It doesn't have a happy ending. In fact, it doesn't give you all of the answers. It implies them. And that's what I get so much out of this comic, is the implications of its ending. The, how the, uh, the, the comic co- uh, reaches its conclusion, but it leaves it so open to interpretation. that it is, It's ridiculous to a certain degree. Yeah, there's so many things that we can come, uh, that we can conclude from this, because for an hour and a half, we've been talking about this and that and not really been focusing on the comic we've been oh. focusing on the implication of set um story well that's cuz this this thing is a smorgasbord i mean it gives you so much there's so many you could make a whole years worth of future issues just based on the ideas this is laid down yeah you can we- totally make an entire separate series just based on the 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 the, the results of this one issue yeah, like the Umbrum are unleashed, they overwhelm the princesses, and ponies have to go on a quest to restore Princess Amore, the last available princess, or some such. Mm-hmm. That's... Yes, in, 
That's just the inner turmoil, that just the inner turmoil that hope, radiant hope is going through, and all the things that she's gonna be able, to, she's gonna have to put up with, uh, adapting to a new life, having to leave every, everyone behind. That gives for so much work, so much potential. It kind of makes me feel sad that it's limited to this one issue. Actually, that will be my my one and only flaw that I will find with this comic, despite all of the other. Um, Kind of inconsistencies and things that I brought. That doesn't break the, the the comic for me, but it kind of makes me sad that it's all contained in this one comic. And I'm like, I want to see more of these. You guys notice a pattern here? Every time when we talk about the Crystal Empire or something similar to that account, we always go on for hours and hours. And that's not really because talking about the comic. That's because it's like it's this place that's supposed to be of wonder and mystery, and it's done diddly squat. Yeah. It's had the, it had the Crystal Empire, the Crystal, the Equestrian Games, which could have been held anywhere. Mm, true. Yeah, you actually and you actually call it fairly, um, uh, fairly accurately, Silver. You call it the Empire of Underutilization. <laughs> the the fact that they don't do anything with it. They and to be perfectly honest, I think they don't do anything with it because the, the Crystal Empire toys didn't sell very well. <laughs> uh, no, really, they didn't. They, they didn't. The, 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 the Crystal Empire toys sold really badly. <laughs> That's because none of the Crystal Ponies had a name. You gotta give them names. Mm-hmm. Like Bob. If I, yeah, Bob, the Crystal Pony. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, the Crystal Builder. He makes crystal houses. <laughs> can <laughs> we <laughs> build it? Yes, we can, because we have magic. Uh... But, yeah, ra- that's the other thing. Radiant Hope, the first Crystal Pony I ever gave two figs about. Hmm. True. Because she has uh, a name. <laughs> Ed, Ed is actually really awesome. I mean, we did, we, we've talked so much about the choices Sombra made. She was willing to stand by him even when he turned, uh, Amore to Crystal. And that, and just because she is kind hearted, she was willing to, uh, protect, protect him. And that's why I wish, Sombra, I understand you hate the guts of these ponies who were mean to you, but look at her! Look at her! Yeah, but by that point, I think but he's already he was, gone. He was taken by the by the hatred, by the anger, by the, the the anger of the moment. The way that he was treating her in that one scene was fueled by what Princess Amore just told him. The whole thing about, oh, I knew that you were suffering. <laughs> it's funny, right? All, all, all these years. Hmm. But, okay, you, here's... What, what can you do? <laughs> but here's the thing also. I mean, by that point, like what James said when he put a parallelism with Anakin. It's, yeah, he's gone, he's evil, he killed um, me, so, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, at, 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 it's at that one point that you sealed your destiny. However, I will say this, the way that Sombra turned to the quote-unquote dark side, it's still better than the way that Anakin Skywalker <laughs> turned to the dark side. Thank you, I was going to say the same bit, thing. <laughs> yeah, at least it, there was a bit of build-up going on there, at least oh. there was a bit of sympathetic uh, re- emotion, but if we were going to make the parallelism, uh, also, Radiant Hope is a lot more likable than Princess Amidala was. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, Queen, Queen Amidala. <laughs> I meant to say. <laughs> uh, she didn't do anything regal. I watched the first movie not long ago and there was no regality on her other than wearing a very stupid looking costume. Yeah. <sighs> uh, but, Jesus. Uh, but I do want to point out that while Darth Vader chose evil, in the end he was, he was redeemed. Yeah, so, in the again, end he did have the choice to become good. So that's why I don't close the door completely on Sombra. Even if he's an Umbrum, if he were given another chance, I don't, that could be an interesting arc, cause goodness knows in the show he's still dead. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, I just how, had this very, I just has this, had this very weird idea of an Empire Strikes Back kind of scenario where Sombra goes to Twilight and he's like, no. I am your second cousin, uh, uncle twice removed, father of your uncle of your mother. <laughs> and my name going, no, what? <laughs> what does that make us? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Uh, well, okay, guys, I have a hit cannon that if you would allow me. Now, think about it this way. In the mirror arc, it's all about absolutes, right? Like, if you're evil in this world, you're good in this world. If you're good, you're evil, right? I, I, was, I never found that terribly appealing. 
Yeah, but it is that way in this it world. Is, it, it is. is. It is. The way so, that it, it's the way that it is put together in the in the reflections. Yeah. Arc, yeah. So now, think about it. Sombra is evil in that world. Is There's a high chance that we might get a good Sombra in this or in the comic world. Probably. And then, and then he and Celestia can get it on. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's this is why head cannons are dangerous. Now everyone's gonna light up the comments and say, Yeah, I don't want get Celestia to have a boyfriend. Wow. Well, you'd be Plot surprised with, you'd be surprised with how the comments are going in the reviews that we're having. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, actually that is the that is one of the reviews that is seen the most. The the reflections arc. And it's like two hours of three nerds talking about different <laughs> themes taken from a children's comic book, yeah. and it it has like almost a thousand views. It's 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 yeah because really. it's it's a big one. But and with that, we see Sombra coming back and Long Live. Well, the not King. really coming back. He's a, he's a he's a shadow. He's like a what is left is like a memory. And I kind of find it. I like the detail about the horn, and I kind of find it rather funny that it is actually used there. It's the whole prop. oh the horn the horn is still there the horn the horn still exists. It's a prop the, thing, prop hunt. <laughs> no, it it is it is something that I I like how poetic this ending is, because yeah he's gone he's dead, but the shadow of the overlord is never gone. That there is always a remain of um, but any real life dictators or any real life despots. There is still statues of Julius Caesar over there. There is still statues of uh, Franco in Spain. But th- th- there is always the remain of the of, of what happened, mm-hmm. and that is actually something that I take close to heart. You cannot erase history, whether it's good or bad. You cannot get rid of it. It happened. It's True. there. You cannot get rid of it. It lingers. Mm, and so it's... I like that. I really like that. And I love the way that they put it there. And that's what I'm taking from that little um, dorky looking moment of the horn bouncing down the stairs. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the shadow of Sombra appearing is that he will never be fully gone. He's still around. So final thoughts. Final thoughts. Well, well alphabetical uh... order backwards like always. So go for mm. it. Alrighty, well, as you can see by the rather intense debate we've had so far, this this one triggers a lot of ideas, a lot of discussion, and that is why it is my favorite of The Fiendship is Magic. Uh, I I agree with James that one issue, this is going to be a lament through the entire Fiendship series, one issue to cover all these aspects of these characters, and sometimes you just can't do it in one issue. There's so much more that could happen with Sombra, there's so much more that could happen with the Umbrum. Part of me is afraid that the ideas that are put out in this comic are just going to remain hanging there for however long IDW runs this thing, runs the Pony comics. I really hope that they will touch back on this again, either to say that yes, Cadence is the, is the uh, reincarnation of Amori or yes, Twilight is the descendant of Radiant Hope or yes, the Umbrum will come back something. As for me, I, I like the story because it has more depth. It has more emotions to it. Because when we review the future comics on this line, we'll probably say it's just okay, but it didn't make me feel anything for the characters. This one, it made me feel for Sombra. Like, I believe that with the right choices, with the right condition, he could have been a hero. Or he could just have been the king of the Crystal Empire and still be good. And the possibilities are endless. Yet, what's presented to us was this. He became evil, all the crystal ponies were jerks, and there is. There's nothing more to it than it's an absolute story of one person's choice. What to say that hasn't been said yet? Uh, As you can see, this comic has uh, an overload of information. And um, it throws it at you with so much, uh, so much happiness. The, the, it feels like the, it does feel like the 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 artist and the writer they they did want to tell this story because there is care and attention in every single one of the panels. And like I said before, Brenda Hickey's artwork, she's able to go from the uh, cutesy, crazy antics of Pinkie Pie in the Pinkie Pie and Twilight uh, Friends Forever issue, but 
He's also able to conjure some of the most harrowing and nightmarish imagery that the comics have had in a while. Like, without counting the the, the, the freaky Queen Chrysalis uh, comics that Andy Price put together and the, the Reflection Star, which also has some some fairly uh, Sleepy Hollow-ish ima- imagery going for it. This is a very, especially towards the end, terrifying-looking comic. But for all the right reasons. The characters are great. Radiant Hope is so likable and she's such a tragic figure. And King Sombra is portrayed in such an interesting way that they take that one three-worded dorky looking horse from the <laughs> season three premiere and they not only they give him a voice, but they give him some background and some uh, build up that he was severely lacking. Because the same way that you cannot care for your characters or for your heroes when they are in danger, you cannot be intimidated for your uh, by your villain if you don't care for them. Like the most intimidating villains are the ones that you know a lot about or you don't know enough about, but they are so interesting. Like uh, like Darth Vader, the Emperor, or the Joker from the Dark Knight movie. So to be honest, this is a great comic. It it's awesome. I love the conclusion. I love the way that it's drawn. I hate the fact that we don't have more issues to tackle on all of these themes, but the worst part of the whole comic is that it's way too good, way too early. It sets the bar so high, none of the other Finship is Magic issues is going to get on the same level. Yeah, I, we may not have as long a discussion about the others. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to get much of a discussion out of many of the issues, especially issue number three. Oh, God, I'm not looking forward to that one. But, yeah, in in, in conclusion, great comic. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right. So, is that it? Yep, that's it. Holy cow. How long was that? An hour well, and 35 minutes. Well, we haven't really <laughs> we haven't really said an outro yet. True. Yeah, we, don't, we haven't said an outro yet, but I just want to establish, guys... I hope that this is as long as it gets. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm with you that this this comic it invites so much discussion, and we are we're all obviously very passionate about it. The passion, true, true, yes, yes. true and and we're passionate in the good way. This is not like when we were discussing the good, the bad, and the ponies or the root of the problem, where the passion came from anger. No, this time the passion comes from love. We 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 three adore this comic. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just that good. Good job, Jeremy Whitley. Good job, Brenda Hickey. Good job, you guys. Yeah. Uh, have, but have have a cookie. <laughs> yeah, cookie. <laughs> I want a cookie too. I didn't know that you had cookies. I um, I do, but I can't I can't airmail them. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, anyway, uh, all the cookies are mine. Uh, Silver is going to eat all of his cookies. Uh, we're going to uh, end the comic review, and we're going to prepare for next week. Next week, we're going to be reviewing issue number two of the Friends Forever comics, which focuses on. Tyrek, or like I, I always mispronounce it as uh, uh, Tyrek. God, I, I, I hate that name. Which is uh, written by Christina Rice, uh, with art by Tony Flix and colors by the awesome Heather Breckel. Uh, sorry, I have to forgive you. We, you. You said we'd be reviewing the Friends forever. This guy has oh, no Friends Finch. forever. <laughs> well, you don't know that. I'm pretty sure that he likes... Uh, I did say Friends forever right now. I'm such a moron. Finship is magic, I mean. Finship is magic issue number two. Then again... Yeah, well, I'm not sure. He doesn't have friends. He hates everybody. (laughs) But that will be a story for another time. We'll see you guys on the next review. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being there. I have been James Corp. And I'm eating a cookie. Um, 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 um. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you all next time. Have a good one. Adios. Suddenly the dark tone of the review is broken thanks to Silver and his goddamn music box. Are you kidding? I can talk about death, the structure, and the pillaging of the world, and I'll still end up that music.